uh, Celery, Celery, whatever his name is. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Bless him. He's going to be a big gem player and he loves it playing it. So. Yeah, well, Boom is the guy I'm watching from Viking GG. I think when that team wins, it's often on the back of a successful performance from him. Can't remember here. Was it was it Quap? You're not supposed to give Boom. Yeah, yeah, that, that was Queen of Pain. Yeah, yeah. I think he was the one who who kicked off the whole blade mail. Yeah, uh, I love Quap blade mail. It feels so good, and I know there was a slight nerf to the item in the hero, but it's so good. It's like two int, right? It's like whatever. Yeah, like whoop de doo. But it's just it's just because int heroes have a hard time, specifically like you know the profits and the quaps, right? They want to get damage, they want to get utility items. There's no real armor item that makes sense for them, and the blade mail just fits perfectly. Plus six is solid. It'd be interesting to see if I can. I believe yesterday uh, they had this theme of banning undying, but they don't go for it this time because they, they they really love to. They seem to love drafting strength core lineups. I think that was more like an aggressive mode ban. Like, yeah, aggressive mode. They're very much a hot-headed team in terms of we're going to try and fight you non-stop. We might not be able to take your buildings, but we'll happily fight you. So I think it takes away that just that team's philosophy rather than like an actual meta based thing. Um, yeah. And there's the Mars. Yeah. If anything is meta right now, it's definitely this hero. Um, it's, just, it's just good. It's, nothing it's like what we've discussed. Yeah, you know? it just does everything you need. Yeah. And there's also, um, you know, damage reduction mechanics are few and far between. And the idea that you can not only reduce damage taken to your front, but also absorb projectiles is kind of yeah. bonkers. Which um, works well with any support in the lane, right? Because you're getting aggro off them, potentially giving them a winning trade. And Shaman, definitely a hero. That can more of a mid-game yeah, than, more of a, yeah. <laughs> than yeah. a lane. Like phase. defending, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think but like early with the ball, you're going to attract projectiles to you, right? That were meant Oof. for other people ah, I think sure but yeah sometimes you're skipping it until like level 10 yeah, although sure. not as often because I think the butt spears people have realized like the offensive power of being able to talk we saw that bulwark. in the last game as well yeah, 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 yeah. and then yeah. Uh, if you're the bulwarks on the spear animation doesn't exist and all of a sudden you're catching people off guard it's uh, it's really quick but you'll see uh, surprise this hero made it through but the Shadow Demon, you know, I was thinking about it. When you see Grimstroke, you wonder, okay, are you going to pick any sort of offensive purge to deal with the shield? You now have Ember, so you double down to the shield mechanic, but you will have that competing, or rather repeating purge from the Shadow Demon Ultimate. If you just pop it on the Ember Spirit, very tough to play the hero in fights. But you've also got, so far in Viking, a lot of ways to prolong a fight, right? So Mars Optimization, you got the pipe, that's naturally the save, and then OG have already now shown, okay, we're going to have this run at you type aggressive lineup so far so Viking going on the defensive whilst the o uh, OGC already going okay we're going to be yeah, the ones offensive part too. that's why I love we love these heroes right yeah. Shiny many of BKB piercing uh, uh, disable sure. along with now two defensive tools you know not just the bulwark you have the shadow demon disrupt you've got the Mars ulti it's just it's just nice but now you need something that can go toe to toe with the ember they ban out the PL and there's OGC taking care of the quap uh, mm -hmm. learning their lesson do not give boom quap or he'll boom you. Yeah, would we'll definitely fit the lineup pretty well right now. Is there anything that comes to mind? Do you think you address the Ember now or leave it later in the draft? Because we saw a team do that earlier and they totally forgot about the Ember by the they, end. Th this is why the Mars and SD pick is so solid because you can pretty much at all points in the game, all right, cool, we can deal with the Ember. If we mm -hmm. if we disrupt him, we're going to have to spear laid on top. And you can see Viking just opting to make sure their drafts always look well-rounded. And mm -hmm. they got the snap fire, paired up with the Mars, of course. Yep, it's quite nice. You just, again, have that AoE locked down. It's a strong laner. Uh, Phoenix isn't banned. It takes it out of the OGC playbook as well, who I see as one of the best counters to Mars because you just combo, or you rather counter the arena with your egg. You don't really want to pick it into the uh, into the snap. So what what do you think uh, OG could do with... Okay, well, there we go. Rubik, I was about to say, do they address the support issue now? Mm -hmm. well, it was a really good Rubik game. Really Look at all these spells, yeah. And uh, you got a lot of nice spells to steal with the Grimstroke as well. It's an underrated combo because if he steals anything single target, you have double fade, both double lift into the double spell. And um, you have an Ember too. So you want something that you know can get aggressive and find kills. What's up? I was looking at the Viking lineup. It's just like every pick's just like... It just looks nice together, right? Yep. Yeah. DK, it's like it doesn't really care about if you run at him, they can potentially put it between yep. two lanes. And, and I don't want to say Ember's low damage, but Ember's this weird kind of hero. It's similar to Alina in that if you're ahead, you can you can do a lot of damage. Exactly. Yeah. But if you're forced to play defensively, mm -hmm. the hero doesn't seem nearly as effective. And you look at these two supports, th there's just not much damage right here on the side of OG Seed. When you look at the double strength hero, the defensive saves and abilities that, that Viking have in their possession, you need something now that can really, like get in there. I, I mean, you could see something like an Ursa, but then you have a concern where perhaps this is too much single target. A little bit. It's and a bit too death ball that. Like when I said about how one team's going to look quite aggressive and the other's defensive, it's yeah. Like, 
Viking, when they move to an objective, it's very easy. The DK sits up front. You've got the Mars to defend them. Snapfire, Itemization, Google Greaves, yep. SD levels. Like, there's so many ways that they can prolong a fight yep. where, so far, OGC, when they commit to a fight, if they miss one spell or don't get that critical kill, then... They're going to be in the wrong they, position. They, they, this, um, this Viking lineup, they, they can form a phalanx of sorts. And the only way for OG to penetrate is to kind of go all in. And it's just not, you're, you're not going to do enough if uh, if these Viking heroes are clumped up. I'd like some sort of spread damage, spell-based damage output now for OG Seed. I could see Leshrac as a possibility. It's a, one of my favorite DK counters. Also sort of fills the same role as the Death Prophet, which is of course banned. Just not as much sustainability. That's the concern. There's a lot of stuns. I think they've become a little bit side. too fragile with that pick. Exactly. It's a bit too... Yeah. So Bangalore yeah. instead? We'll Give them another element fight. of team fight. They can get to the back lines now. Snapfire starts ulting. They don't need to rely on the Ember to be mm. kind of the guy to try and yeah. Kill him, obviously not cancelling it, but this, killing this him. was necessary too yeah. because you needed some sort of it, it, Pangolier will scale in some form of damage, whether that's dealing extra or all these team fight items to prevent it. But they had to get something that was formidable in the mid game because otherwise you're just going to get a DK form hitting a tower, a Mars rotate, and all of a sudden nothing can stop the pressure and you're going to lose your tier ones early. Pangolier at least can get aggressive, which also then benefits the Ember Spirit because they're going to be able to dive in together. But where is their sustained damage in these fights going to come from? What's the centerpiece to this lineup? I think the main thing though is if you, when you look at Viking, when they want to move to an objective, it's only really DK hitting towers right now. Mm. And when you're playing against Pango, Rubik, Ember, Grit, like all four of these heroes will happily defend a tower, right? Mm -hmm. So I think Viking might actually have an issue of trying to even break into the base, where if, sure, they win maybe a couple early fights, but that tier three area, I think OG are going to dominate any tier three defense right now, so... I think, think it's like Viking need to find a solution to that. I was going to say, do you think the Viking right now scale better? Because we've seen how formidable DK is in the late game. Mm. You've got SD that scales amazingly with the percent HP removal. Uh, does OGC need one of those kind of more true carries that can actually follow through in the late game? I could see them going for something a, a bit extreme, like a Dusa, which uh, I just believe in as a hero concept right now. You but... just really want to see that Scardian effect, huh? Yeah, that too. Um, it's a little risky into illusion makers like Shadow Demon, but I'm just thinking they need some form of ranged damage that that kind of can be their centerpiece. I think a Leshrac would fit, but to TGov's point, it's just too fragile. So yeah. I want something a little more formidable. Uh, I love the Razor Band from Viking GG because that kind of fits perfectly into that mold. Um, I could see them going for something like a Gyrocopter instead, but I'm just very, very uh, unsure. I want uh, I want something with more mixed damage. I could see perhaps a Sniper, but I don't know about ooh, Sniper. Ooh. I love that hero, though. Sure, but there's... Uh... I guess it's okay. Like, there's no way Viking really get to backlines until Mars has a blink dagger. So mm. technically, it would always be able to survive, and then the high ground is even stronger. But then it's if they ever leave their base, they're in a difficult position, especially when they don't have last pick. Shadowfin. Okay, that grounds out their draft. <laughs> it's the it's the concept we were looking for, right? It should have a solid matchup against the DK, assuming it's in the mid lane. And in addition, I've always loved. We have rather always loved my brother and I this Rubik SF combo because it's so simple to set up a triple race. It's the easiest rotation in the world. Just say, hey. Hit him with the long nuke. Okay, great. Now hit him with the medium short. Boom. That's 600 plus damage at level five. It's a uh... also unlocks their uh, tower taking potential, right? True. Like right now, they're all about fighting. But after the fight, they question how do they end the, uh, how do they do anything? And now you got your 15 talent. He could go for let's say treads BKB. Very clean timing. Mm -hmm. You just push with it. He can be your front line. Yep. It's mixed damage too, yeah. and it's high damage, which yeah. was missing from the lineup. Yeah. Now you have this centerpiece to play around effectively mm -hmm. that you can follow to these towers. You have someone that can carry the Aegis effect. It's a really nice pick, and I was Ember about to say it, but you're susceptible themselves. to this TA. You have the Ember, though. The matchup mid is not as bad as it used to be, but it's very important now that OG Seed get off to a good start so that they can collapse on this mid tower and try to take away TA's jungle. Because at a point, TA just shoves SF out of the lane. You put too many traps down, you're suddenly you're clearing the wave in two seconds, you're farming his camps, you're hitting the tower. You've got to stop that if you're OG Seed. I think the main thing here is just the timing of, of Radiant. The Death Wave Blink TA, paired with any levels on DK, yeah. that snowball potential, and sure, you're going to have that ability to fight as well on OG Seed, but it's so hard to fight when you've got this Deso TA just blinking on top of you. So yep. I think Viking, they have a really solid draft. They are potentially weaker in that early move from OGC, and if they dominate the early towers, get some good moves, mm -hmm. OGC could close out the game. Yep. But to it's me, too it, clean it, looking. both these supports have some form of save mechanic, and their cores are much more formidable, or rather survivable, right? Yeah. OG Seed, 
you've got a lot of kill potential, but you've got to play it. Like, you don't have as much effective HP on your lineup. So it's important to take more skirmishes rather than full-on 5v5s, especially when you consider you're playing in the Marsh Shadow yeah. Demon. Um, I think I'd have to favor Viking a bit because I just think their lineup is easier to play. But if this Ember and SF get off to good starts, they're the one to net worth. Once we hit that 25, 30 minute mark, suddenly things start to spin. But I'm just scared that Viking GG, they're tanky. They're just so tanky. They love doing Where are you going to find right? the damage from OGC? Like this team is very, I noticed this, a big pattern is they usually go for these bulky frontliners a lot of the time with maybe one or two saves. Uh, how do you feel, T? Do you, are you on the Carl train with Viking here? or? Yeah, I feel like OGC need to have such a good laning phase to then not be punished when they try and rotate to maybe shut down the TA. Where if it goes any less than like good for them in laning phase, the rotations they make towards TA will just unlock the Mars and DK's game, yep. which will then just simplify their proce process. So I think Viking yep. for sure has the better chance of winning, but I'm, I'm very confident in OGC's execution. So 60-40 to the, Viking. The, the concern I just have is that like SF, you, who's going to be the bully for OGC? Because SF against any of these three cores, you don't want to stay in a lane when you see one of them, right? Oh, there's a Mars here. Uh, do you feel confident? like walking up to the wave, hitting him? No, because there's so much threat on you. And that's my concern here, is that if OGC don't get map control, yeah. it's going to be very tough for them to stay on map aggressive. All right, well, we'll just have to see if OGC can play aggressive like their father, or if Viking are going to be swinging those axes like Mad Men. Lyrical and Trent are on the line and ready to take this series away. How about it, boys? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. KP himself, Trent. Uh, it's been a while, but we're back again, and man, this team took down Secret a little while ago. That's kind of insane. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, quite the time of Dota. Very happy to have so much online Dota going on. Big thanks to uh, everyone like we play, organizing these beautiful events, and uh, I I'm just enjoying it. Yeah, man, it's awesome. It's uh, it's it sort of feels like it's a nice distraction from obviously all the craziness. As apparently the binds on Zibi are, are struggling a little bit. Um, there was a little bit of the uh, the nice all chat that was going on between these two teams in the lobby stuff. There were some questions about our game coordinator issues. We're a little bit late to get started, but it's all worked out in the end. And there wasn't any penalty or reserve time that was thrown out. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a, an interesting matchup. Um, as you said, a very cool time to have online Dota, and I feel like Viking GG has been one of the teams that's been most helped by this. They have, like, crazily increased their stock in the Dota 2 world, it feels like. Yeah, it's kind of them and uh, the Chicken Fighters, I would say, would be like another team too, right? Well, now now NIP, I obviously, as they <laughs> picked cool. up. So talk about raising your stock. Uh, things obviously going very well for them as well. But uh, this game, I think uh, KP kind of hit it pretty accurately with the whole uh, father-son situation going on here. These guys, they got to play like OG. You know, you watch that series versus Virtus Pro. There are some games where the drafts look a little like, uh-oh, I don't know how it's going to go for them. <laughs> but if you're able to just like keep getting these chains on Ember and keep up this incredible high tempo aggression, like get across the river and never go back after like 15 minutes. That's how you make these lineups work. Yeah, and I think that they have the, some of the heroes that fit really well with that, right? Like you talk about the Ember Spirit. I also think Pango. I, I feel like Pango is still being underpicked, even though it's like sometimes going in the first phase for certain regions. This hero still feels insane to me. Um, granted, I, I would probably uh, like to see how this matchup works out with him going up against this DK. I feel like we've seen more and more DK's safe line, and it just it feels so hard to punish. And this hero. In some ways, like if you get a blink dagger on him, it feels like he does some of the same things that Ember does in in like the mid game, where he just blinks in, finds a low, you know, commitment stun, and just sets up a fight. Yeah, he's turned into this nice uh, earlier in the draft pick. Uh, it used to be he was so good to be picked early because you had like ninth pick or something, right? And you were maybe concerned about what could counter a mid, and as long as you banned out some of those more annoying heroes, you'd be all right. Now it's like, yeah, he can go safe lane, he can go to the mid lane, and maybe you're going to build that blink dagger, or maybe you're going to try and go something a little bit more aggressive after your double bracers. But uh, for now, he's got the magic two items queued up already, and uh, I definitely like the blink for him this game. I think him and the Myers setting up everything so that uh, TA is going to have freedom there for boom. That's the way to go. Yeah, I agree. I, I like that idea a lot. Um, the laning setup so far, we talked about it, but the Pango and then the DK uh, facing off against Snapfire and Rubik. Z Freak already taking a good amount of damage. They're actually going to miss the Swashbuckle as well. Uh, so that's going to be the interesting matchup. The panel had talked a lot about like mid, the, the TA versus SF. Um, were you kind of agreeing with their assessment? You feel like this is sort of the, the new classic that TA kind of gets the better of them on? 
Yeah, it's just, I mean, mid is like, I'm glad that mid's back like this 1v1, because that's always exciting. And like, you watch the first couple waves, you see who's going to see us and denies everything. Like, Chessie's owning right now, first off. He's yeah. doing very well. Nicely done, sir. But uh, then we just go to the jungle. <laughs> there's there's all of this excitement, but if there's not like a lot of rotating heroes, it's like, okay, I'm out. So yeah. I'm sure we'll see plenty of jungling from both of them. And uh, to that regard, you know, who's going to be getting the stacks ready for their mid laner? We got to keep an eye on that. Shadow Demon, you watch No Tail play this hero, man? Mm. On the Radiant side, he stacks like all three of those camps over and over and over again for his mid laner. It's so nice. And like you can get the triple stacks super duper easy. I was watching some of the, like the Southeast Asian uh, Dota and Boomy, you know, from Adroit. He was oh, playing Enigma I? position four. He took like Midnight Pulse as we see the spear being used on a Pexu here. And that dude's going to die. First blood being drawn by Toby. Uh, but the thing I was saying was he was like constantly stacking him and clearing through him. We got like that six minute Helm of the Dominator. Oof, it was spicy. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see Shadow Demon already starting to build up a couple of those. Uh, over on the hard camp at the very oh. least. Yeah, he just uh, dodged out a slight there from Madara, keeping that clarity rolling. Mm. Trying to slow down Aramis. Curry yeah. nearly surviving bottom as well. There's so much more action on the like early games because of the couriers. It's like those little tiny mini objectives. We need like courier first bloods for bonus gold. That's what I'm waiting for. A few too many couriers. They're getting a little distracting. I don't know. All these reversions, guys. Enjoy your single courier while you have it all to yourself. You never know, right? All these changes <laughs> are suddenly going away. Yeah. You never know when that thing's going to go. Can you imagine the <laughs> the chaos if we went back to one courier? I don't think anyone could handle it. No, I, I would just, I mean, because it's like, you you know what you had before, right? So yeah, you, can't, yeah. you can't ever go back again, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, I'd be super All right, Aramis, let's go. He's got the double. Easy peasy. And... Happy okay. PA. So didn't go for that that triple there. Um, it can get a little bit weird if you're like just leaving the lane for forever, right? And leaving yeah. the Mars alone. You got to get there pretty early for the the triple because you need like the the decay of the shadow poison mm. to make it work properly. Oh man, yeah, it's uh, it's so far very very low impact. Bottom lane doesn't feel like there's any real potential for a kill unless it's on like Z Freak doing a super bad misplay. Uh, up top, I guess Peksu is is the the most at risk. Like, do you think that OG Seed can like find any aggression in this early lane stage? It feels like it's not really anything. No, they're just trying to get some gold. Yeah. Get some lasses on your Ember. They're going to be looking for those level sixes, I think, as well. I mean, both teams really, right? We're going to have the arena uh, as well as just even like DK ulti to, to brute force towers. But uh, we're going to want some remnants. Go for a triple remnant kills. Farm your way up to a couple items and then Pango. I would like to see some earlier rotations as well from Zube. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this ward down here on the bottom side of the map? Scouting out couriers moving over and then also if they're stacking up ancients. Uh, kind of a cool little one down there. Yeah, might have been them trying to get the right lane matchups too. They they probably wanted the Pango versus the uh, the DK, and right. just making sure that he was gonna be coming down to bottom. But yeah, it works both ways. It gives you quite a few coverage. They don't really have a great like sniping support. Like I find when you have like these Weaver fours, that ward is really good because it's right. so free to kill, uh, to kill carriers. If you have that much knowledge of when they're coming. What I please. Oh. So, so far, uh, like you're talking about, Chessy just having a really good time here in the mid lane. The DD rune now in hand. So 26 and 12 versus 18 and four. Uh, it's not like a significant XP lead though. They're just both about at level five. So it, again, it feels like this this almost doesn't matter as much as it used to because the jungle is just so well, prevalently used. Look at their net worth too. Yeah. <laughs> like they're both just spamming yeah. each other. I mean, this guy's got rape band two branches. That must be uh, his bottle coming out and indeed it is, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, a training of back and forth here. Again, it comes down to like the level six of the traps and then the rotations, but Peksu again. Mm, getting in there. A couple more punches. Doesn't have enough mana for the spear right now, but it won't matter. Aramis able to pick up that kill and looks like it was a trade off of bounty runes. OGC is going to pick up the other one up on the top side of the bottom map, which is an uh, interesting way to say that. But... <laughs> You know, we're going to stick with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really on point here. <laughs> you got to have a little bit of fun every now and then. So yeah, level sixes for these guys mid. Uh, again, the panel was talking about the worry of traps being laid down and then Chessie need to just double raise the wave and get out of there. Um, haven't really seen any stacks be made on the dire side of the map so far, uh, but he can still just clear through the camps. Easy peasy. 
Yeah, stacks would be nice, but uh, not really something that they can afford with their heroes. You know, Z Freak's down here playing on like the ET or something. Sure, lots of stacks. He's able to like chuck back the spirit and he does his thing, but has to be a little bit more active in the lane as the Rubik. He is trying to give quite a bit of XP over to Zive, though. I've noticed him like leaving the lane a lot and like roaming mm. somewhat towards mid, and that means Zive's almost level five, so they might go for a kill in Slary when he hits that. Dude, I can't believe like how hard it is to deal with Dragon Knight right now. Eleven armor. He's got double bracer with like. You know, almost 1200 hp like he's just th this hero no matter what it feels like has a free laning stage it's like nothing you can do to him yeah, and it's not even just the region it's just that his last hitting is also super good because of the, yeah. the breathe fire he's able to help secure these range creeps oh up top they break the tp out madara got hit just by the tip of that spear um and that's gonna be no tp for him and also can't refill his bottle so a uh, really big win with just using one spear boom able to clear through a lot of those camps He's going to run into Peksu. Peksu's going for the huge recovery play oh, here. Oh, God. <laughs> but able to get the refraction off. Still rooted. Chase down. Silence. Trying to run away. They take off the spirit from him. Uh, as a little bit of a misplay there. The second round, Peksu is eventually just going to die. Um, so they made it work. He was maybe just hoping that he was going to catch her with the refraction on, on cooldown or something there. Uh, right. I don't know. I wasn't watching before to see the timing. So obviously uh, he went for a super risky play and he'll, he'll go 0 and 3 now. But, you know, oh, no. it's, these kills, uh, they don't have the comeback value anymore. Right. And then uh, it's just what? 3% of your net worth. I mean, 3% of 800 is that's that's nothing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's not a whole heck of a lot now. <laughs> Dude, he is so freaking broke. Oh, my God. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, he's going to have a, uh, a tough time this game, but already rotating down bottom. The bonus dives, you can throw that ink swell onto one of these pangos or something as they get the lift back, trying to find a kill here, possibly. Phantom's Embrace sending in the creep as well, but the cookie away. Going to find the stun, but nothing else afterwards. Wow. Um, so that is a really early Helm of the Dominator for Zibby. Yeah, now they're kind of in... Oh, as our, our friend, I think that's our tie caster, is going to point out as well. All right, everyone just wants to point out that uh, there is indeed a helm. <laughs> He's notifying the other casters who surely haven't noticed this. I must inform them. Dude, they're, they're, they're doing a public service, letting everybody know what's happening. Uh, well, we did have the uh, the Grimstroke rotation, though, which means that uh, the levels are a little bit delayed now. Because Pango was like almost six. Like, he's probably ready to set something up here. He probably wants another creep. I feel like if you got a centaur or something, you could combo that a lot better with the roll. Yeah, that's true. It's like a good amount of damage. Like 150 magical is pretty solid, but um, it's, yeah, not the, not the same uh, as being able to just get that hard stun on it. As they'll take back over this outpost. Has level six. They're running over towards mid, it looks like. And they find Aramis here who would love to be able to pick up the summon of the Dominator creep, but realizing that's probably not going to be likely. And hey, look at that. Zibbe is just happy to stack up the camp as well for him. Yeah, Slurry, they have the word vision on too, but shouldn't be killable, I, I oh, wouldn't think. Yeah, I mean, disruptions there. Not the Soul Catcher afterwards as well, but it's going to be a turnaround attempted kill onto Aramis instead, as Z Freak is nearby. And well, he farms up the camp, farms up the hero, and is able to get out scot free. I mean, I just. I don't know about that one, dude. <laughs> I can just do some <laughs> quick math for you. And there's no way you're killing that panga before he ults. I have no um, idea why they went for that. I guess maybe he thought they had the outpost. That's like the only thing I can think. Mm, yeah. But I, I'm not sure. It was it was also a nice play by the uh, Pango taking back over the, the Mud Golem before oh, no. it died. They're going to they're gonna stop him. They don't want to take the outpost. <laughs> okay, they Wait, just give up the outpost. Now they're moving back in for round two. Silence, so he can't drag until to break it. And the stun comes out in the end. I don't know Wait, what Zephyr that was. It. Oh, Zephyr got it. Oh, what a player. And can they get oh, no. the <laughs> Got the last second if they lose him now. Oh, Zephyr, got to run away but it looks like they're going to be able to chase him down eventually. One more punch. Z Freak still living, but Shadow Poison dodge away. Oh, what a player. Is he going to live? If he lives right now, I swear to God, get out of there, Z Freak. Oh this is space created. Whatever. He's going to go die to the tower. Nope. my way through. <laughs> Just sneak on through there, and Spear comes through in the end. I mean, space created, right? That's fine. Yeah, three heroes. Oh, man. Feeding two heroes for the uh, attempted steal of the outpost doesn't feel very good though. All right, here we go. Chessie's onto this one. All right, it's a good play. Keep you on out of there. Yeah. Max on up. Man, um, three he's... heroes takes an outpost really fast, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. Yeah, that was nuts. That was super quick. Yeah. 
Um, also noting that Chessie just going straight BKB as they run in onto this Dragon Knight yet again. Toby is behind enemy lines, though, finds the jump onto Chessie. They weren't able to get the hit onto the edge of the arena, and now Requiem of Souls comes out. Fear onto a couple of them, trying to find the follow-up kill as the Pango rolling through, taking down Shad as well. And that is a big win for OGC. They needed it. Peksu Redemption Arc. Gets the soul mine. Thanks that E Z. Also a really good spot to fight for Zibe too, right? Yeah. Like sometimes it can be hard as Pango to fight under the tower, but they were just pushed so far back next to the cliff that it actually worked out. He could just keep double chaining them. Mm. Yeah, that was really sick. I mean, you, if you bring everybody, it's gonna work. But the cost of it is losing that mid tier one tower. Um, so Viking GG able to get something even in the face of losing a couple of cores. Uh, I guess the big question is how much is that going to shut down the OG's farm? Uh, one or one could say, them. but at what cost, you would say. Right? <laughs> That's true. Uh, is that what you're going for here? I mean, the cost is uh, more control over the Roche bit, which is definitely a problem because you are against a TA lineup. So every bit of, like, the easier it is to push out the mid wave, the better for Viking GG. It means that this outpost becomes pretty important, I would say, for OGC to ensure that uh, maybe they can keep contesting that 20 minute Roche fight. Mm. Our, our Roche fight's going to be pretty tough for them, though. I mean, Pango's pretty good, but then you have, like, DK's going to be so beefy. There's going to be traps for vision. If the arena's up, you're in trouble. You have Snapfire ulti. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a lot of potential uh, dangers when running on into that pit there. And I mean, the thing is, is both teams really want to be able to to take it at a decent timing. Like Shadow Fiend would love to be able to get an Aegis on him. Um, and I will say that, like, at least having the BKB early on on Chessy uh, will, will help with some of that danger, right? Um, that's a nice part of it. Yeah, I feel like I'm missing like uh, drums or something. It's like on a courier, but it's it is very unusual to see like the the raw BKB. But when you look at the line of a Viking GG and what they're trying to accomplish, it does make sense. And the way, especially the way Dota's being played right now, like right. we have these games where usually you had the time to get that one item and get the BKB, and then the fights start. But nowadays, it's like it feels if you if you lose that fight at like 18 minutes, you're suddenly so far behind. You have to make these miraculous team fight victories to get back in. And he's just going to just like try and avoid that by just going fresh BKB. Yeah, and even more so now because of the change to, to kill streaks, where it's less than the ridiculousness that it was before, uh, at least. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're seeing the push down bottom right now. Madara trying to get some extra uh, pressure onto the bottom side of the map. Um, I'm wondering if OG, after taking that mid tier one, are now going to see if they like can take out the top tier one, because that would give them way more of that Roche taking potential that you were talking about. But it's a smoke up from Viking GG. In some ways, uh, I think bottom's actually better, because then you can have the pressure forcing on the tier threes. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Like, try and like spread them up from actually just playing the Roche bit, but uh, Lord. That, uh, that creep scouting things out here. Oh, and the ink swell onto it. That's, what? Zibi went through the wall. I'm out. <laughs> He's out of there. They do kill off the Shadow Demon and now leashed up running away. That's the Mars Arena down. I mean, can they take this fight afterwards? They, they could still think about it. I don't think they have enough chase here. It's it's very hard for SF to just like walk in after one bola. Just take your victory and, and back up there, Madara. But uh, man, poor Erebus. He just walked up those stairs right into that center. I don't know if he was just thinking like, nah, Zibay's not going to micro or something. He just got <laughs> stopped. Yeah, it was weird because he placed the ward up there too, so he saw it the whole time. But, uh, you know, these things happen. Uh, less than a thousand gold lead now. TA still sitting top of the net worth. Deso done. So there is an option to try and take Roche, but as we talked about, uh, very, very worrying if you just sort of roll in there and potentially get rolled over. Pango. There, we're kind of close to a pipe here. I mean, like six or seven hundred gold away for Toby. Hmm. Much magic damage, quite a bit of magic damage on OG that we're dealing with, and they're just gonna go right for the ulti. So they're gonna try to chain this into the the centaur. We'll see if they've got it. Doesn't have now a they... steel yet, so hopefully he's getting the bulwark out by now. Oh, he doesn't have. Oh bulwark. god, they missed it. All right, well, stun, still burning him down, and we'll eventually die as we have a little bit of a pause. Uh, Zibe, there you could see is swashbuckle. A couple of them have been kind of off the mark, and he's the one that pauses. Maybe there's something that's going on with his computer. Or, or yeah, at least Taylor is, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> I like that idea. Clearly, it's the computer, not me. <laughs> Don't look at me. This is how I can tell the Z Freak's good at Rubik and I'm terrible because he didn't even bother trying to steal something there. He's just like, I'm waiting for the potential turnaround that someone could be hiding in these trees. I need right. to steal. I don't I don't care about spear or God's rebuke. He probably knew it was God's rebuke and not spear. So that's why he doesn't doesn't go for it. 
I just feel so naked if I'm Rubick without the stolen spell. Why, why am I even playing this hero? He, he's waiting for the big one. He's waiting for uh, the potential uh, Snapfire if he can. Obviously a tough one, especially in the Roche fight, because what are the odds that Rubick's going to find himself in range of uh, wherever Snapfire should be playing? Yeah, that's the uh, the one downside to it. I mean, there's a couple other good ones, maybe like DK stun to some extent, although you have to get like right up close to somebody. Traps are obviously pretty solid too. Love to get traps. Yeah, and the arena is probably the one that he's really hoping for. That one's tough at level six though. You gotta like get a bit of the uh, the range going on, get some items going before you can actually reach. Get, get up to like 125 cast range sort of deal. Yeah, then all is well in the world. For now, just for fraction. So yeah, another little slowdown in the uh, the pace of the game for the moment as another ink swell, giving some extra gold to Mr. Z Freak himself, whose courier did die in that last engagement. And it looks like both teams just sort of comfortable waiting for that next tier of items. But it's Blink uh, and Deso now done on TA. It's Chesty got anything else queued up after the BKB? It doesn't look like it yet. It's like, I didn't think I'd make it this far. I, just, <laughs> I assumed I'd have a BKB as our, our racks were dying, but <laughs> life goes on. Still holding it for that uh, that Roach Pit fight. Yeah. I'm Could digging the new spirit vessel, by the way, although a fight's probably about to dig, uh, break out here. Uh-oh. Joby, but the jump in, finding Peksu in some trouble. He is done. And the stun, they're getting the full chain oh, so you can just no. use BKB at all. Where's the ping? This is where the caster should be king of that BKB. <laughs> they want to ping items. That's an item. Oh my god, triple kill for boom. That was tragic for OG Seed. Holy crap. Ooh. Uh, what, was, what was the vision like? Did they have good wards there? I didn't see any, but that looked like they had an amazing vision during that fight. There was a sentry ward that was just dropped down by Dyer, so they might have been able to deward it like right as the fight was going on. Didn't quite see, but chasing forward for Zibe. They find the stun onto one, trying to take down the Pango. Misses uphill on the TA, but Madara now rooted. A couple more punches is all they need. Not quite able to chain the cookie together. But Viking GG building some momentum now. And you can see OG Steed immediately go for a smoke to try and turn this back around and find a kill up top. Yeah, the positives, uh, your death respawn is very short because it's so go. early in the game. And uh, Aramis hung around a bit too long. Yeah. He is going to get punished here as it's actually Peksu of all people that picks up the kill. Wow. It, boom. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he might get away, guys. <laughs> yeah. You kind of get it quickly. I mean, to be fair, he's, he's had a rough game, you know? This makes up for it. What, what does he need? If anything, he wants his net worth to be as low as possible. So every That's time fair. he dies, it's not worth anything. I guess he can get his Aether. I'll allow that. Dude, he wants a Ghost Scepter. It's the, the big. Nice, yeah. It keeps getting jumped on there. Oh, did he get the Ob suit? Oh, he didn't. Ob's just outside that sentry ward. <laughs> frustrating. Frustrating, frustrating. Okay. So, yeah, continuing this sort of slight gold lead now, but it hasn't really translated into another item. It feels like this BKB timing from TA and Dragonite is probably going to be the, the point where Viking GG are just, like, ready to go. Because what, what does this lineup of OG really do once those BKBs come out? It feels like there's not much. I'll tell you one thing. It's really sad when your guy bought first set in a BKB and there's no fight. Like, I mean, there was one fight. He didn't yeah. get a chance to use it, but it's also Viking GG just recognizing that, hey, he bought no like scaling or fast farming items. Let's just not even fight them. Like we're going to be able to get to our BKBs and he's still going to be a lot weaker than us. Right. Totally. Yeah, it's it's a it's a big problem there. Um, did have the spear stolen by Z Freak a little bit off the mark there. So they see the TP away as the scan goes through. And yeah, they're just like, you know, Dogs chasing after a car, trying to find some way to, to nip their, their teeth into it. It ain't happening. They have the good chase potential too, right? Like they have the Ember, they have the Pango. Mm -hmm. Just uh, their vision isn't necessarily great past the river. Um, everything's kind of expired on this side. There's also been a lot of Radiant Sentries down on their side too. Plus they have the traps, so they know if like some support is wandering in here to like place a high ground board or something, kind of where they're moving right now. Yeah. The Scan bird going to scout things out. <laughs> Oh, uh, unfortunately, though, they see this courier heading over the Observer Ward, and that signals that the smoke is coming through. Um, might have been able to catch somebody otherwise, but OGC now thinking with this DD that they're going to run into the pit. That was also scouted like by the Observer Ward. This is good, though, because they are really far away because they had to push out that bottom lane. Does have sort of the, the inkling that they know what's going on, though. They're moving over. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be able to finish off in time. They have the BKB on Chessie still. Chains uh, to try and slow it down. Behind. 
Oh, God, this is kind of spooky. Snapfire ultimate's already been used, though. If they can wait that out, they still have some extra duration on this double damage. So, Shad, this blink's going to be off cooldown in a second. Ember goes in. They find the cookie, continuing to control Madara, blinking on the other side. Aksu goes out. Requiem Soul is going to connect onto a couple of them, and Madara trying to take down this Dragon Knight. They will find that kill. Soulbind onto two. Is it going to be enough? They're all caught in it on the low ground, but the jump in coming from Madara, taking down Aramis. A buyback comes from him. The Grim Stroke, because he wants to get back into this fight. I think oh, OGC can take Roche now. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure what happened is that Boom tried to dive the backline on Z Freak. He has Ghost Scepter and he stole Meld. <laughs> so Boom was just like, huh, I guess I can't kill this guy now. Damn. And now Z Freak's melding Roche. Easy. Oh, that's great. Yeah, this is going to finish off super quickly. Um, really heads up play there from OGC just to make sure that they uh, you know, take that fight effectively. And now they get Aegis. Yeah, the way that the terrain was laid out, it was like Madara going in and just creating that chaos. They, it was timed at the exact moment that uh, our, our DK went in there from Shad as well. And uh, Madara is kind of like in and out. DK right. is just the in, right? Like, <laughs> uh, he, he had a hard commit there, and his teammates were not able to assist him, especially with no Snapfire ulti. Usually you're looking for the artillery support if you make that move as DK, and, and they have to be scared of you. Uh, but there, they really only had to fear the TA, and the TA tried to jump just Z Freak, so they, they knew that it was pretty free. Yeah, these Ghost Scepters are going to make a really big difference in these fights, definitely. And like you said, being able to Steel Meld or whatever else is out there, like maybe even a Refraction when the TA jumps. I, I guess that the other thing to watch for is going to be like, you know, some other defensive lockdown item. Because if you look at Viking GG, they oh, don't they're, really they're gonna have try a nice lockdown. Z Freak here, I think. He, he looks so tempting. They have Vision. I think, oh, okay. All right. They're going to relax. They're spooked. Spook, spooked. I don't know. I think that this is, uh, I mean, how, how big of a turning point do you think this is in the game right now for uh, for OGC getting this Aegis and winning that last fight? Uh, it was necessary, I would say, because trying to hold on to these fights, like if there's just no Aegis, these fights look really good for Viking GG. And now with an Aegis on OG, I feel like they just kind of try and ignore them. Uh, so well, mostly just try to ignore the SF. Okay. See if they can, because like, he doesn't do that much damage right now. Now he is going for a butterfly. That'll be slightly more of an issue. But... <laughs> I'd like to see them just like drop in arenas, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea too. Um, we saw there for a second, Toby, he's taking his pipe out of his backpack so it doesn't show up on the creeps um, that are down there in the creep wave. Okay. Guy's going to be making a Reddit post asking for a toggle. <laughs> I'm trying to hide in the trees, sirs. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't thought about that before, but it's kind of cool. It's like, you know, Radiant's turning off, but you can't do it. <laughs> He's got the, the hugest of brains. Good old Toby Wan. Um, I know. So. It's such a transition for him to, to make the way. <laughs> <laughs> and who would have thought he'd be playing Mars? I thought it was going to be Drow. You know? Or Techies. That's what he usually yeah. talks about. That's a good point. Sorry, Toby, Toby's going to gonna be here, guys. You know, he's 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 hanging out in this tournament. I'm sure you all saw the announcement. Dude, I'm some, actual, some actual good casters on some of the other games. So that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. I bet you guys are excited for that. <laughs> it's going to be so sick. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to tune in for that. <laughs> all right, let's see. We got a 2,000 gold lead. Uh, Viking GG still holding on to that. OG seed. Trying to play a little bit more oppressively now, shutting down areas of the jungle, but you can see like Boom here, he really does not care. Like no. he is just walking away. Also doesn't want to just like burn his 10 second BKB though. So it's a good thing he just still didn't get like bullet or something because he, he'd probably have to try and make uh, some escape there and, and waste his 10 seconder. Mm -hmm. yeah, I tell you, Ember has got to be the best hero right now. I'm glad he got a little bit of a nerf, but nothing too crazy. I, he's super fun to watch, so I don't really want him to go away. But just the way that like slight works and applying all these debuffs, like having the Deso and you just like slight three heroes or something is so good. It's true. I, I feel like it also just fits with what you need to do right now in Dota, like you were talking about earlier, right? Yeah. Like getting aggressive early and winning that fight because he just provides like so much of that little jump in there catch that is like low, low commitment. Um, It'd be cool if you had like scotty and spirit vessel versus like some crazy heal team oh, yeah. <laughs> you're just like <laughs> crazy reducing them that's amazing i like that idea a lot let's go for it that's um, how you know i'm not a core player 
<laughs> like, yeah, that's really what I want. I just want Scotty. I don't want Deso to actually kill people or something. I just want to reduce their healing. Dude, he is going Solar Crest afterwards, though. He's got that queued up at least. He's got to buff up his uh, BKB first SF. Uh-oh, jump in. Pango, they're caught here for the moment, but it is uh, just quick dead Pangolier. It was mighty quick. And the worst yeah. part is no BKB spent. That's the true disaster. Yeah. They blow up Peksu afterwards. In the meantime, we did see Ember back behind the tower. He immediately decides, I do not want to be here anymore. Uh, so they're just going to lose the tier two tower. They can uh, poke high ground here because they know that the, the uh, Aegis is gone in 20 seconds. So it's not a safe fight for the SF to try and flex the Aegis here. And of course, they still have all their BKBs, so there's no reason to stop. DK ulti isn't as important right now when they can just all BKB TP. This is, we this this have is a cancel, really rough. Do we? No, we don't. Affected by Afterburn, apparently, for three seconds. Thank you, Espresso. Appreciate it. As uh, another round of chains goes out, but they just lose it. Like, range barracks goes down. Quick stun onto an illusion. Rarely seen, but much respected. Mm. And uh, Viking GG, they just back out. Aegis is down. The only thing that they really were able to do in exchange for that OG is like a tiny bit of chip damage on his bottom tower. Yeah, this is that moment where it just, it feels like the game is, is quite hard for them. Oh, and now the uh, the neutral items come out. All right, let's roll some of these. All right, we get slivers on both sides. That's good. I like it when it's like fair, you know? If someone mm. gets like one of the good items, can we at least hand it to both? <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, Titan Sliver, they both get it. The Paladin Sword versus Repair Kit. I mean, they sure as hell need the Repair Kit. Uh, A little late, you know? Uh, <laughs> more range racks. <laughs> True enough. Uh, definitely. Um, but it, I mean, it's still going to be useful. I, I've seen, and I think you have as well, a lot of these games, teams are able to come back from like around the six to seven K gold lead. If there's like an overextension, um, I just, I feel like it's sort of weird. Like there's a lot of these little mid game, early non scaling items that have been picked up by OG seed and, and not as much like building towards the late game. Yeah. They were prepared for more fights than what occurred. They, yeah. they were ready for like. 14, 15, 16, just like nonstop, constant, constant, which is what we discussed for both lineups, really. Uh, and it's what OGC wanted to do, but they just couldn't force the fights. And I, I don't think their lane shove's necessarily that bad. Maybe they're just too scared because of all the initiation that's like possible. Like, it's pretty hard for someone like Grimstroke to just be like down in that bottom lane shoving. Um, we did see Zefri, which is down there, and he managed to escape, but it could have been that sort of fear that was in them that made it so that it was like kind of easy for Viking GG to just roam around their side of the map and dodge all these fights from the BKB first SF. Yeah, it, it, it feels like one, well, and, and also like their forms oh, are talking. Oh, yeah? That's oh, a yeah. good one. Yeah, we got the orb on Ember now. That's again, it's one of these like gets <laughs> on everyone, right? So now he's just going to be taking everyone's armor down. How much is that going to be? So that's seven, then another five on top of it. That is, that's a lot of armor. It's been 12, reduced from seven to six, <laughs> sir. Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. The, the Deso. The Deso. Yeah. It's oh, by seven from... seconds. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the NA math is strong right now. Jesus. Don't worry. It's going to be great. I, I will say that, uh, you know, you, you get up Chessy into this like whirling ball of destruction. You yeah, know, that, he, that he, is a he, lot he of minus carry. armor. Look at this tower just go. Uh oh. And that's without the SF helping it. Right? Oh, he didn't take the presence. Yeah, that's right. Took the movement speed. A little unfortunate. Madara. Uh, he's purged. That That is a slow moving remnant, my man. Trying to get away from him. The Requiem comes out, stunned for the moment, but they managed to find a jump in stun onto the Shadow Fiend. Spear actually keeping him alive as he pops his BKB and Zibe. Just going to try and roll on out as the yeah, rest okay. of them need to escape. And oh my god, that was close. Zephyr hey, TP. Oh, what a, what a player, the cookie, though. Oh, it's not quite going to happen in time. So he will go down. Aha! <laughs> Got him with the last scatter blast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't great. Uh, trading that for a, a tower. The, the runaway BKB from Chessy. Feels, this BKB has just been a cursed item this game. No. He's not feeling it. He's got the plus two damage per soul now, at least. And he did make it out, so he still got all souls, which is nice. Well, oh, Madara facing off against Toby here. He's got the medallion onto him as well. Lots of minus armor. Right click's coming through, but the jump in is there as well from the THS. He's just dead. Oh, no BKB available. Oh, God. Poor Chessie. Damn. The 
Sword of Invisibility. Yeah, Trinity ain't looking good. <laughs> it's, it's really not. Three heroes dead, and we head into the Roche pit. Oh, this minus armor, but no one to hit them. It feels like the team fights. It's really sad. Uh, they're 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 struggling right now. I mean, Zibay, again, he's got his Pango ulti if he wants to. Like, I mean, there's no way anything's gonna happen here, but. It's like all of the pieces are there for them to fight, but they're never happening at the right time. That, and there was a window where they, they needed to utilize the items they built, and it just didn't happen. z Freak gonna try and make escape. He gets the purge. Maybe right. Z-Freak can help him out. Maybe a chance here. Rolling back and forth, hitting Aramis. Oh, but then TA shows up, and they're like, we gotta get out of here. And poor old my man Z-Freak is not gonna be able to get away. One more spear from Toby. Cancels that TP and dude, Aramis is just running in here with these blink daggers, causing havoc, making life real sad for Zippe and the jump in, meld strike, wow. gonna connect. They are not playing. That was quite the arena. I guess he thought he had Pexu too. Uh, Madara is doing his thing now, bottom with the Desa and the Orb, trying to get something done. They have noticed they've glyphed, but they'll be the counter glyph from Madara. Double value on their melee racks as well as the wave down bottom with the catapult. So they can trade for a potential lane here. Now, can anyone cancel TPs? Can they make I mean, a sweet play? Oh, no. Not the throne. He's just going to blow up Pex. He's so much damage coming out. Yeah, triple BKB is pretty hard to deal with. This Jesse might have gotten dove and found there, but they're going to decide to back out for the moment. Are they too deep with these BKBs wearing off? Ember no. shows up, getting some extra damage in there. Oh, but the stun comes out onto Ember. Going to completely eviscerate him. Buybacks galore as they're trying to slow and possibly chase down any of these people. But but another imprisonment is going to keep Boom alive for the moment. Meld, strike, turn around, hit down Zibe. He is dead. And yeah, they're letting us know that the Aegis of the Immortal was still there as TA is eventually going to be rooted, um, but can just kind of walk out of there for the moment. And they're going to go with another arena, because why not? Peksu, he died enough, but they're going to keep killing him. They just don't care. Well, Zephyr got it, but I don't know if it's going to matter here. Uh, the cheese is still currently sitting on the DK. I thought maybe passed over. Chad's getting kind of low, so. And yeah, by Nick and GG, they're just like, we're going to end this game right now. Uh, they have the repair kit to try and keep the tier four towers alive. And maybe they're actually finally going to give. Oh, oh, stun, melt strike. One, two, three times the charm. Oh, is they kill oh. Matari yet again at Chessy with this PKB. It's trying to keep him alive. The stolen arena. Uh, wasn't quite enough. Or those are just the illusions that were coming out from the Radiant, rather. Jump in, meld strike with the spill damage, and Jesse's dead. GG. We knew what was happening. Yeah, I I don't know. They just got, like, walked around on. Viking GG just went the other way. They, they were like, fight us. I have a 15-minute beat, KB. You Ugh. must. And then Viking GG was like, nah, nah, that's cool. I think we'll just get, like, Blink, Deso, and BKB, and then maybe we'll see around the Roche Pit or something.